Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to have a discussion on Banking Regulation Amendment Ordinance 2020 that has been pa recently passed by the Cabinet at the Centre. This particular amendment includes three sections. First is inclusion, second is exemption, and third is exclusion. This particular ordinance amends the provisions of Banking Regulation Act, which was passed in the year 1949. So first we are going to begin with the inclusion part. So first with inclusion part, we are going to discuss about the clauses that has been inserted under the new provision, under the new ordinance. So first is power to make a scheme for reconstruction and amalgamation without imposing moratorium. So we need to understand in this that there are some banks it may be cooperative banks, it may be commercial bank, it may be the co cooperative banks but with some exemptions for some cooperatives. So if they are under moratorium then RBI will have the power to take actions against th those banks, against these banks, the cooperative, commercial, these banks. But there is a certain period which is six months of period immediately after the moratorium has been imposed on some banks so in that period no legal action can be taken but there is certain conditions that has been divided on the banks that banks cannot proceed with the loans they cannot give loans to others they cannot sell their assets and they cannot give away their liabilities so ultimately RBI will have the power under this new ordinance that RBI can ask the central government to reconstruct or amalgamate the banks. So that was the first clause. Now coming to the second clause that is that talks about the issuance of shares and securities by the cooperative banks. Under this, the cooperative banks can issue equity shares, preferential shares and special shares. They can also issue unsecured, this is a very critical term, unsecured debentures and bonds they can also share that there is one more condition let's say a person a person a have invested in certain bank and now the bank is under moratorium now what the person wants person wants that demand in lieu of the returning the shares of the bank that means the person want to de disinvest in the bank so this provision is even restrict that person to entitled to demands in lieu of returning the shares to bank. So ultimately we can say in one sense, so it is something like swim together and sink together. Now that was the second clause under the inclusion part. Now coming to the third clause that is supersession of board of directors. Now let's say there is a bank and that bank is under moratorium and they have some board of directors. So under this clause, what the cabinet has introduced is the bank of directors, the board of directors, I beg your pardon, can be superseded by the RBI for a maximum period of five years. If it is in the public interest, this is must condition. So this clause is applicable only to the multi-state cooperative banks. That means multi-state cooperative banks are going to face this particular clause. Now further if we move, in case of cooperative bank registered under the registrar of cooperative societies of a state. So R then in that condition RBI will supersede in consultation with the state government. And only after that supersession of the board of directors can be take place. Now that was the first part. We have already discussed about the first part. Now moving to the second part that is the exemption part. Under exemption certain exemptions have been given to certain cooperative societies these are as follows first is the primary agriculture credit society this particular society are is exempted and uh, cooperative land mortgage banks they are also exempted under this second part is consists of cooperative societies whose principal business is long-term financing for agriculture development this is a must condition and uh, certain condition have also been relied on them such as the banks I mean though that financing agency that cannot use 
द टर्म बैंक बैंक और बैंकिंग इन दियर नेम और इन कनेक्शन विद द बिजनेस एंड वन मोर थिंग इज ऑल्सो देयर दैट दे कैन नॉट एक्ट एज एन एंटिटी दैट क्लियर चेक विच इज ऑल्सो अ कंपल्सरी पार्ट फॉर दम नाउ दैट वॉज द सेकेंड पार्ट मूविंग टू द थर्ड पार्ट दैट इज द एक्सक्लूजन पार्ट अंडर दिस ऑर्डिनेंस दिस ऑर्डिनेंस ऑमिट सम सेक्शंस और सम प्रोविजन्स ऑफ दैट वो अर्लियर इन द बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइन नाउ द एक्सक्लूजन्स आर दैट कॉपरेटिव बैंक दैट एडवांस इज लोन्स टू द डायरेक्टर ऑफ द चेयरमैन ऑफ द कंसर्न बैंक और द कॉपरेटिव and to the private companies where the bank director or chairman is an interested party so earlier this provision was prohibited now this section has been omitted under the new ordinance this new ordinance also specify the manner in which the loans that is that are unsecured or advances that may be granted to the cooperatives beg your pardon by the cooperatives now the third part third section under this exclusion part talks about the movement of a bank let's say a bank is under moratorium and uh, that bank wants to move from one village or town to other village or town so earlier they were not allowed they were prohibited but now new provision has uh, is can be sanctioned but a prior permission has to be taken from rbi earlier one more provision was also there that is scheduled cooperative banks that have to maintain assets with a value of not exceeding 40% of its total demand and time liabilities within india so these four are the provisions that have been omitted under the new banking regulation amendment ordinance to 2020 so that was all about it thank you very much for being with me this time thank you